This is the Blastworks way to do a valve stem oil seal replacement on an 81 through 83 Honda GL 1100 Goldwing without having to take the head off. So the first step is using a 12 mil wrench, we remove the bolt that holds the cam sprocket onto the camshaft. This calls for a special tool, but I just use a piece of steel like this so you can put this in against the webbing that's in the housing back here. And when this goes to turn, it will bring up on that housing and you can turn this out. Once the sprocket is off, the next thing we need to do is we need to remove this heat shield right here by these two 10 mil bolts. And we need to take off the valve train cover, which is these four 10 mil bolts here. When you do this, you want to have an oil pan under this just in case there's any oils after remaining up around your rocker assembly and stuff like that. Now that we've got all the ancillary stuff out of the way, all we need to do is loosen off these six bolts that hold the rocker arm assembly on top of the cam. And what you want to do when you do this is you need to do this in a crisscross pattern when you tighten them as well as when you loosen. And you only go like a couple turns at a time with each screw until they're all nice and loose. That way you don't have to worry about cocking up the, uh, the uh, rocker arm assembly. So let's go ahead and take those six bolts out. Some people may wonder, you know, the order of these bolts, where they are, is that important? No, not really, but if you're at all like I am, then as you take these out, what I'll do is I'll take them and I'll lay them out the same way they came out. So this is top right. So when I get this out, I'll go ahead and lay this down over on my paper towel back here. And it was top right, so I'll go top right, bottom right top middle, bottom middle, top left, bottom left, and I'll lay them out. So I'll get these pulled out now and we'll take the rocker assembly off and the cam off so we can have a look at these uh, valve uh, springs. So that's our rocker arm assembly, remove them out of the way, now you can see we can get our valve springs relatively easily. So now the first thing we need to do, and this is recommended in the manual, I'll have a link to the manual in the, the description of this video, that way if you need to look up anything you'll know exactly how things go as it's stated right in the service manual itself. So to prevent these from falling into the cylinder, one trick that people do is They'll take 
cotton string like this and they'll fill up the cylinder with it. And what I mean is you'll turn the motor over until you see this is number two, this is number four. So let's say we're doing two first. You'll turn the motor over until you see number two all the way up top. And when you see that all the way up top, we'll back it off slightly. We'll pack in as much of this as we can fit in there. And then when we turn it back again, you'll feel the piston bring up against all this cotton string. Use cotton because you don't want to put nylon in there. Nylon, if anything stays in there, will melt and be gummy and not good. If it's a bit of cotton, it's not going to matter. It's going to burn and get shot at the exhaust. So what I'll do now is I'll just keep an eye down into number two cylinder through the spark plug hole. The plugs are out. I'll turn the motor over via the crankshaft in here until I see that piston come all the way up. I'll back it off a bit. I'll put some string in there. We'll turn it out and then I'll show you our little trick for getting these uh, keepers out of these uh, seats and getting those springs off so we can get at the valve stem oil seals. I just want to bring you guys back briefly while I'm putting this rope in. This is a game of patience. I'm using an Allen key, nice and long. I'm just folding this down every once in a while. Then I can poke in at the fold and push that and whatever else is down in the spark plug area on down into the cylinder. And once I get so much poked in, I'll just drop in another little fold here and do the same thing again and keep poking those folds down in. That's the quickest way i found that this works for me. Uh, like I said, this is a patience thing and it's this or take all the heads off. So, you know, pick your poison. I'll bring you guys back when we're ready to start popping some of these keepers out so we can get out of those valve stem oil seals. At this point, my string is quite packed in. I can feel them. So now if I rotate this back toward, I should see that string come up and get squished and now I can't turn the motor anymore by hand because that string is being compressed or squat by the piston in the cylinder. So now that that's done we can go ahead and mount up our little jig here and I'll show you what I do to get these compressed so we can get these keepers out and replace these valves and oil seals. So I'll start this with number two intake and then we'll do number two exhaust. So what we want to do is we need these two bolts here, these are the valve assembly keeper or valve assembly uh, bolts and we'll screw those all the way in hand tight. Once those are all the way in hand tight, what we need is a means of one having a pivot point so we can use something like this compression tool, spring compression tool. So you can see I need something across here to here so I can rotate that in and compress that down. Now if you don't have one of these you can pretty much use anything. I'd even consider using you know like a, a wrench like this. As long as it's big enough and as long as you can get it in there and something on it so you can rotate it that'll be able to compress that down enough so you can get these keepers out. So now my method to actually get something there so we can have a fulcrum be able to pivot this tool and compress those springs and get those keepers out. I use two pairs of vice grips and a piece of thread or rod. Ignore the bearing, that's from when I use this to knock a wheel bearing out of um, one of my other projects. We don't need to be too concerned with that right now. So first thing is first is I want to use my vice grips to clamp this onto this bolt over here. That's one side clamped. I can come over here, I can clamp onto this side as well. Oh, I need to go on a bit further. I slipped off. Now that that's good and secure, you can see I can put my tool up through here. If I compress this, you'll see now that I've got a fulcrum there, I'm able to compress that. And we can actually see those springs getting compressed and the keeper's almost popping out there. I'm going to go ahead and re-secure my vice grips because I just slipped off. I'll shoot you guys in closer and we'll see what this looks like up close. So now that we were able to use our fulcrum here to pop that down, get those keepers out, you can see now that because the head or the cylinder, sorry, is full of that string, that valve won't fall into the cylinder because it brings up there on that cotton string. 
So I just want to show you guys quickly in real time the reinstallation of these springs and whatnot. So let's give this a quick wipe off. Definitely give it a quick wipe off now it's been on my garage floor. And uh, while I'm wiping this down, if you guys are interested, I actually have a, well, this is going to be part of part two of this series, but there's also a first part of the, uh, just the series dedicated to getting this thing roll worthy for a, a road trip. But either way, now that I've got that cleaned up, we put our springs on. Next thing we can do is we can lay our seat in place. Now I like to have both of the keepers in my hands ready to go in one hand. And I'll have one in position ready to be slipped in. The other one I'll just stick in the palm hold my finger. And come in here, give it a little press with my hand here so I can get in place. Once we get our tool in place, we'll compress that down. We'll go on in until we see where the, uh, well, I'm actually going to do this a little bit further down. Here we go. We'll compress this until we see where the seats are for the keeper. That's that one in. Now I'll do the same on the bottom. I'll compress that as far as I can. We'll slide the other one in place. Now we can just let that back out slowly. And voila! Little look, you can see our keepers are nice and solid here. One thing I like to do is I'll take a socket. This is a 19 millimeter. That's about three eighths of a banana, I guess, if you're in the United States. I'll just give it a little whack to make sure everything's good. And yep, looks like we're good. So now I'm going to go around and do the rest of these. So I'll go down and do exhaust on number two. Then I'll do intake and exhaust number four. And I'll bring you guys back when we're ready to put the rocker assembly all back together and get everything back on the, uh, the head here. So there was your real time fast forward. I only fast forwarded that about 400%. So when I clicked record and when I clicked stop, it was exactly five minutes to do that. So now you see me do it once. That's how you do it everywhere else. I'll bring you guys back when we're ready to put all this back together. So now that we've got those four valves and oil seals replaced, I'm going to take those two bolts out. We'll bring the rocker arm assembly and cam back over, get that all bolted back up. I'll probably put some assembly lube on the uh, cam bearings here. We'll get the rocker assembly back on and we'll continue putting this all back together. I might just let this run and we'll go fast forward, see how it goes. So now that we got this snugged up by a hammer, just going to crisscross pattern, tighten this up, 
make sure this gets drawn down properly. And then as you can see in the manual, whether I put it on the screen or you download it from the link included, these get torqued to 20 or 15 foot pounds. So that's our six bolts that hold down the valve assembly, snug down to the proper torque. So then the next thing we do is we're gonna put on our cover plate back here, put on our heat shield here, then put on our cap. I'm currently running low on memory cards, so I'm just gonna let it run for five or 10 minutes while I get that done. And we'll come back and talk about uh, what needs to happen after that. Just quickly, you'll run into stuff like this when working on these old bikes. Uh, there's old gasket left around here that is completely no good. I cleaned up the back side of the heat shield already. I'm going to clean this off. I'm going to put a bit of RTV on the heat shield side of things. Get everything cleaned up with a bit of brake clean so it's all well and good so the RTV will stick. And we'll get that back on and get this cover back on. So I went ahead and tucked that heat shield in with a bit of uh, silicon RTV just around where that bad gasket was. So that should be good. Next thing I want to do is I'm going to pop my cover back on. back on we can finally put on our can gear and that bolt gets tightened down to 20 foot pounds So there we go, we're all buttoned up. We've got the valve stem oil seals done. They're on number two and four. It was the same process that we did on one and three that I just didn't record. Hopefully you found that informative and it helps you out. As for getting the timing belts and everything back on and the timing all straightened out and good, uh, refer to one of my previous videos where I, I think it's part one of the Goldwing Rover in this, where I actually do the timing belts for the first time. Uh, I'm not gonna worry about including that in this video as well. This is going to be a separate video based just on doing those valve stem oil seals and this is also going to be a part of the part two of that gold wing series so you can pick that up in either spot anyways hope you enjoyed thanks for watching